There are a number of miscellaneous equalizer Python scripts available for you. Let's review their use. Bake filtered buffer curve. So here we see that because there's heavy smoothing on this camera that the smooth curve which is post filtered and the regular curve are different from one another. So we can actually bake the smoothing into the regular curve. Just go right here to bake post filtered curves. When that happens notice that this has automatically been set to off for the post filter setting and the reason for this is if you want to use any of these lock constraints it's nice to have this all nice and pure you know without with that smoothing filter already built in. Next feature is alpha minus plus. The, there's four scripts here and I like to hotkey them. What they do is let's say we've got a model here and we want to change its alpha channel. Now what we could do is we could slide here but another method of doing this would be if we put uppercase LIDAR into the name and of course that can be changed in the script instead of that we can actually hotkey it. So we go here to alpha minus and we can see that that's changing for the alpha but if you put the hotkeys like F11, F12, F9 and F10 this can be hotkeyed and you can set the value right now I've got at 1% or 5%. The next tool is average 2D point. This is similar to the Philip Maddox script and what it does is we can select two points here and then it'll do an average between them. The difference on this version is that in the previous version if you had only one point uh, the averaging would not be correct but this has some error detection so that if you only have one point it uh, will still do an average point uh, that doesn't look dumb or have an error in it. Display distance between camera and point. So we've got F6 here if we select a point, go right here to display distance between camera and point, what will happen is that in the Python console, it will display the difference distance between the camera and the point. Display distortion values. What happens is, especially when you're doing anamorphic work, and if you have a lookup table here for the focus curve, the actual final distortion value can be a little bit hard to determine. This tells the fully baked uh, animation curves for any sort of distortion and this is post the any focus curves, it's post the zoom settings on and off so this is very nice for knowing exactly what your finished distortion value is. It will slow down your interface a little bit so you can turn it off when you're not using it. Have the Euler flip filter. Sometimes especially if you're getting a Cooper file in from Maya you might have a 360 degree Euler jump and you go right here and there's Euler flipping filter just like in Maya. Film back. If you go here to uh, display um, and we get FOV here. So it'll display if there's any film back settings and then uh, film back this will show you exactly what your film back is without any rounding errors that you might get from the attribute editor. Get 3D file path. If you need to email the path of your equalizer scene to someone, it's quite easy to go here, 3D file path, and this will display the full path, and then we can copy it and paste it into email wherever we need to go. Import XYZ RGB. This one's a little bit esoteric, but Equalizer will import uh, XYZ files, which are a type of LiDAR file, and once you have those brought in. You can actually uh, bring in just the red, green, and blue component of the XYZ LiDAR file with actually bringing the geometry. The idea of this is that you'd have an existing OBJ file and then you'd be able to bring in just the colors, the pervert text colors on those points. Incremental save, very useful. Right here, incremental save, what it'll do is if your scene has V003 or V004, it will increment up from your last number. So be sure to suffix your equalizer scenes uh, with a lowercase v. Jump next pose, jump previous pose. 
So here we've got poses. Normally, if we want to go between things in equalizer between uh, keyframes, we hit the page over the page down. So this allows us to jump to the previous pose. And so notice it's red down here. It's only going to go to these pose frames. I like to hotkey it to uh, uh, shift page up or shift page down. So now I'm able to go easily. Lambdatizer. Lambdatizer will take a geometry and give it Lambert shading. So let's say we've got this thing here. We go to the Lambdatizer button and now it has a Lambert shading on it. There's a low con and a high con that just has slightly different settings and it'll be a little more obvious if you have uh, something with more shape like this one here, a more organic shape. So let's add the high con. Now we've got Lambert shading and equalizer. Uh, sometimes you'll have to hit F5 or F6 to get this back, and if you go into reference mode, it'll lose your Lambertizer. Mirror image. Let's say you have a geometry and you have to rotate it. The, they're flipping your plate. You can hit the uh, mirror image. 180 degrees and X button and it just flipped it. This is a little bit dangerous. This is actually better if you were to fix this in mind, republish it in your system, but this is a quick fix for an X. Uh, to mirror image a LiDAR and Z would be very bizarre. Again, this is when you have a plate that's being flipped, you know, where there's a car chase and the action's going from left to right. They want to chase it from right to left and the entire LiDAR has to be flipped. Uh, you can flip it here as well. Pick up key. If you've got a key that's missing here, you go here and pick up the keys. So now let's pick up the key from where we already are there. Next, enable camera. So we have two commands here to go between cameras. We have set next camera. And this one will go through every single camera in the list, whether it's reference camera, uh, sequence camera, enabled or disabled. Let's go through next sequence camera. Notice it's only going through uh, sequence cameras, reference cameras are being let out. But if you have a situation where you're doing image-based modeling, you might want to have it where you have uh, set next enable camera. So notice right here, since this particular reference camera is disabled, when we hit the button, it's only going to go through the enabled cameras in the viewport. So it's leaving out reference 7. So let's say we only want to go through one of the stereo cameras. We could disable it. Again, just go through the enabled cameras. Set playback in frame. Set playback out frame. Let's say we're parked at this frame. We have got can just hotkey this, so this will be the out point. And same thing with endpoints. Show point deviation. Let's say we select two points, go to Python, show point deviation. What it does is it shows in a 2D and a 3D sense the distance between points. This can be very useful if you're doing a nodal zoom type of shot, because uh, but uh, there's other techniques a little bit easier for, than this. Toggle stereo left, right. If we want to toggle between our stereo cameras or non-stereo cameras, this way is a little bit easier than the previous script. Let's just enable this camera. The reason for this script is to work in concert with um, calculating stereo parameters. So you can copy uh, your stereo values to the cameras. And so what you do is toggle stereo mode. So notice it's taking both of the cameras up here and taking them in and out of stereo. And then you go to calc and convert to stereo. So generally what you'll do is that when you're 
uh, in the stereo mode, you'll hit the convert to stereo button and then you'll toggle out of stereo mode here and then you hit, hit calc. One additional Python script that can be useful is the model on off which is toggle 3D model visibility. So if you want to turn a model on and off, you can turn it on and off here as well, of course. But if you don't want to have this attribute editor up, all you have to do is go to any other object and just marquee with the Alt button and then you get model on off. And of course it will work with multiple selections.